Welcome back to Vox in a Box, the podcast that puts a voice in comics. I'm your host, Michael Corley. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We are covering classic X-Men number 67, titled Rescue Mission. We open with Carol Danvers being tortured. As we saw briefly in an earlier episode, she was taken away by the brood to be experimented on. They could tell there was something different about her. She's not a mutant. But as uh, Moira McTaggart had mentioned before, she has the genetic potential of the superpowers that she had lost long ago. Those superpowers basically being super strength, flight, and partial invulnerability. They are experimenting on her, and it is nothing short of torture. They are able to force her into evolutionary changes, turn her into different monstrous shapes. But they say that even through the agony that she's experiencing, she remains sane. They've never seen this in a subject before. One of the brood go off to get refreshments (laughs) for some of the brood who have come to visit the science center only to see Wolverine waiting for him. Snicket! Wolverine charges into the rest of the brood after slaying the first one. They come to slay him. His skin is still pockmarked and scarred from his attempt to be transformed into a brood in the last episode. He slays every single brood in the science center. And the problem is he has no idea how to work. The science lab, the machine, is organic. He has no idea what the different buttons and knobs do. And Carol isn't even remotely human right now. If he shuts it off, will she revert to her human form or will she simply die? Finally, he decides... Regardless of what will happen to her, he can't leave her in a state of constant agony. And using his claws, he smashes the control. Carol falls. She has become human. But for a moment, when she opens her eyes, her eyes are full of stars. Then they become normal again. Wolverine can tell by her scent that she is no longer human. But she looks human. She finds something to dress herself in. And she grabs one of the Brood's weapons, and they go to rescue the rest of the X-Men. Back on Earth, we see Lorna Dane and Havoc. They are greeted by Corsair. They are trying to find out what's going on. The X-Men and Lelandra have been kidnapped. But, of course, they don't have any way. They don't have a starship, and they don't know how to save them. But Corsair, of course, does, and he's going to try to find them. Meanwhile, we cut to Scott Summers. Cyclops is in his full uniform. He's running from Brood. Then suddenly he sees the X-Men. He runs over to them, firing his blast, trying to hit the Brood, going over to help the other X-Men, when suddenly the X-Men all turn into Brood. He fires his blast, destroying the Brood X-Men, only to look into a strange mirror and seeing that he himself is turning into a Brood. The reflection of him is telling that the Great Mother implanted an egg that is growing within you. He screams, but he sees an image of Xavier. And this is not the true Xavier, but this is the representation of all of the training that Xavier has given the X-Men against psychic attack. And using that, he's able to take control of his dream and wake up. He comes to himself and he realizes that he's not on the Landris throne world, that he is somewhere entirely alien. He sees Storm. He comes to her, and for a second he sees overlaid on her image the shape of a brood. Storm, in a trance-like state, begins to cry. Thunder splits the sky. He touches her, and she wakes up, and she's crying, and she doesn't even know why. Of course, we know that she is reacting to the brood that is slowly growing within her. Storm and Cyclops meet up with Wolverine and Carol, and Wolverine says that he's found out that Lalandra's yacht that they were originally on when they were kidnapped, is moored on one of the ribs of the giant space whale. All they have to do is rescue the rest of the X-Men and make their way out. Wolverine, using his tracking abilities, is able to track down the rest of the X-Men. The problem is, several of the X-Men still are under the hypnosis of the Brood. And even though Peter trusts the rest of them, when he looks around, he sees the Shi'ar homeworld. When he touches the organic walls, he feels metal. And he doesn't know how to react to this. And of course, 
Wolverine is thinking to himself that eventually he's going to have to tell them that they're all infected with the brood. And what if he's going to have to kill them? As they're trying to decide what else to do, the brood come in attacking. Of course, Colossus still sees them as Shi'ar guards, but trusting Cyclops, he attacks them. Carol Danvers realizes that her blaster is not going to be much good against them, so she goes to free Lilandra. Wolverine has a very specific plan, not just rescuing the X-Men, because in his heart he thinks he may be too late to do that, but to kill the brood queen. As he's fighting his way through, he finds her, a giant, bloated brood. She is furious because she senses no brood life within him, and he's saying that he'll do the same for her. He's coming at her. He's going to kill her. Carol Danvers and Lilandra come back in, both holding blasters to help out. Carol is suggesting they withdraw, but Wolverine won't stop. He won't stop until the Brood Queen is dead. Now we cut to Storm, Nightcrawler, and Kitty. They are flying up, up, almost out of the atmosphere. And Kurt teleports carrying Kitty Storm is thinking to herself, this may be the death of them both. It is very hard for Nightcrawler to teleport long distances and dangerous to do so with a passenger. It is entirely possible the strain could kill them both. But even as she's thinking this, an energy bolt fires a brood scout ship. A little space whale, or a giant space fish perhaps, <laughs> is coming after her, and the to dome on top is firing energy blasts at her. She has to try and distract it to give Kurt the time they need for their plan. Nightcrawler has successfully teleported to the yacht. The problem is the rib that it's on is outside of the breathable atmosphere. It is freezing cold, but he hangs on using his power to stick to walls while Kitty phases in to the airlock. She's got to get Kurt out or he will die within a minute or so. As she's trying to get inside to open the airlock, suddenly a brood attacks her. It tries to hit her, but of course she's able to phase, and she's trying to hit her again and again with its venom, trying to paralyze her with its venomous tail. She dives through the deck, phasing through. The creature is coming towards her. She manages to make it into the airlock, but so does the creature. She has her hand on the airlock door. Remember that Xavier downloaded all of his knowledge of the Shi'ar Empire to Kitty. She knows how to operate the airlock. She could easily hit the button and force the creature out into the space, killing it. It tries to stab her once again, but she's become intangible before she can make the decision. His flailing about and trying to hit her activates the decompression and he is flung into outer space to die. She's able to pull Nightcrawler in, but he's like a block of ice. And she's worried that it may be too late, that Kurt may already be dead. Back to the main battle. They're going on and on, and Wolverine is saying, now is the time to kill the queen. Cyclops is yelling, no, Wolverine, we do not kill, not ever. Lilandra is telling him it's a fool, that this is war. Wolverine agrees he's lifting his claw to strike the brood queen, say, bye, babe, when suddenly they are all bathed in yellow light. They all teleport away. It is Kitty. She's used the transporter on the yacht to teleport them to safety as they rocket off. Wolverine, of course, is furious. He's saying, if I just had five more seconds, I could have gotten her. But as they're trying to get away, we see that the yacht has been targeted by enemies locking on, and the last phrase is, All guns, open fire! And that ends Classic X-Men number 67. And I want to take a brief moment just to say thank you for all the... Uh, <laughs> I got several comments uh, sending me about, about your first X-Men uh, comic after I mentioned that the last one, which was uh, 162 in the original Uncanny X-Men listing, by the way, um, several of you sent in your original X-Men. And, and please do that. Uh, send me your original X-Men comic. What was the first X-Men that you ever read? You can email it to me, michael at voxboxcomics.com. You have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon.